Hi everybody, this is Jay, with a review on one of the best games today, GTA San Andreas. Yep, you heard correctly, we're reviewing the same GTA we played so much about 10 years ago as kids, that we started hallucinating that cops were really after us. Or maybe that was just me. But let's begin with the storyline. You play as Carl Johnson, or better known by his initials, CJ. The story begins when our hero learns about the death of his family, and quickly heads to his hometown, San Andreas, where the main events of the game are set in motion. The familiar atmosphere of the 90s, where the growth of the hip-hop culture, small crimes, drugs, and rock and roll all do their job. The player, meaning you, can do everything he wants. Steal, kill, sell ice cream, rob a bank, or even open his own business. Or he can go to the gym and build up his strength and endurance. Or he can go swimming, which is why everybody fell in love with GTA San Andreas. After all, in this part our hero finally learned how to swim. For those who forgot, I'll remind you that in previous games of the series, our hero simply died if he fell into water, and that caused a lot of discontent among fans. Also, our hero can visit clothing stores, tattoo parlors, and hairdressing salons. And the game world, conditionally, is divided into three islands with unique adventures that await you on each of them. And using the best new innovations borrowed from the mobile version of GTA Vice City, which we also have a review of, by the way, is the opportunity to switch on your own music instead of just the radio and saving your game in the cloud so you could start playing on your tablet and continue where you left off on your smartphone or vice versa. Fans connect with a certain control system if it's good and hate it to no end if it's bad. So luckily Rockstar managed to collect players' feedback on the game competently and adjust the controls for the better. So now about the control system. The screen is conditionally divided into two parts, left and right. On the left we have the joystick, which we use to move our character or vehicle and the control buttons are on the right side. Shoot, get into a car, etc. And now the shtick of the mobile versions of GTA. Contextual keys which appear only when it is necessary to execute a specific action. For example, to take a photo or to fly a plane. Also, it is possible to change the size and arrangement of the buttons, which is a really nice feature. So what about the graphics? Well, they are also raised up a notch. Despite the original game being released in 2004, this GTA can boast some of the best graphics on mobile devices. The most obvious innovation, the emergence of realistic shadows and the reflections on cars in real time. But some of these types of features can make a graphics-heavy game slow down on older devices. But luckily, that doesn't affect the gameplay too badly. And now let's transition over to the only minus, bad optimization. The game demands a minimum 1 gigabyte of RAM, and even with a high RAM requirement, the game still manages to lag. The lags are especially noticeable during fast driving, and as for devices with a large amount of RAM, the game goes rather smoothly and without any troubles. Now the results. Rockstar decided that their baby should be the best mobile game it can be, and we can agree with this. They once again managed to outdo the competition and to show why it is necessary to create and port such games for mobile devices, because if you do it right, it could be awesome. That's all for today. Follow our channel, put like on everything, and join our Facebook group. This was Jay with reviews from Mob.org. See you!